this year, SRUC veterinary investigation officers have been working with three beef farmers in the Scottish borders who experienced problems with small calves being born. A high proportion of the calves born from the spring herd were affected and many of these were still born and calves that did survive were fully developed but had an extremely low birth weight of around 12 to 20 kilos. The exact cause of this new and potentially emerging problem, referred to as small calf syndrome, is not yet known and investigations are still ongoing. This condition will not only have a significant economic impact on the businesses affected, but it was detrimental to the farmers' mental health at an already busy and stressful time of year. In this video, we hear from William Barry at Rumbleton Farm in the Borders, who will tell us firsthand what problems he encountered and what investigations have been carried out. We also hear from Alwyn Jones and Lorna Shaw from SEC who were involved in these investigations from a veterinary and nutritional point of view. I'm William Barry, a farm here at Rummelton in partnership with my parents. We have 600 acres on Rummelton with 215 cows calving down in the spring, predominantly Angus, crossed with cemental. Um, we have one limousine bull as a terminal sire. We keep everything through, we finish everything at home, it goes direct to slaughter. We also buy in store cattle, just over 100 store cattle in a year. We store some of them back out if the price and the circumstances are right, and, or we finish them along with my own through the summer. We have 200 acres of spring barley, we have 30 acres of winter rye, 26 acres of winter wheat, which is nearly all fed through the cattle. So our, our problems kind of started with abortions six weeks a month before calving actually started. We got involved with the vets reasonably quickly because there was another farm in the area had the same problem or it seemed like they were having the same problem. So the vets, and they'd started a week or 10 days calving before us. So the vets were quite keen to, to see what was going on after we started flagging up. We were getting more than normal abortions and getting, getting small calves right from the start. You know, we ruled out things that would, like say long bone deformity that it wasn't going to be the answer to this problem. As well as abortions, we, we started off with small calves right from the start. Uh, we had a few of them that were under 20 kilos. They were alive and they were keen to get on. They had to get a hand to get sucking or get tubed. There's a few of them were quite smooth with their hair, but, but noticeably they were, they were really thin and small muscle definition on their back end. And the other thing that was quite clear, they were coming where the cleansings were, were translucent and you could hold it up and see through them and the cotyledons were, were, were small and really dark rather than there wasn't, there wasn't this blood and blue colour that you would normally get with a healthy placenta. So we think there were approximately 50 calves, so nearly a quarter of the, the herd has been affected by the small calf syndrome. That's including abortions and, and deaths. We've lost about 10% of the, the calving herd and those cows are obviously, unless I happen to have a twin to twin onto them, which I didn't have a lot of, those cows are out of the system and have now been culled. So I have less cows going to the bull, I'll have less calves again next year. It's just a knock-on effect. Some of these calves you can see here, they're, they're viable and they're thriving, but they are noticeably smaller. Whether that will affect them as, as time goes on, we'll just have to wait and see. Whilst we've, we've had small calves that are quite obvious, I think we've also had a lower immune effect on some of the rest of the calves. We've had some joint ills, meningitis and diphtheria, which we've not had very much of for a very long time. And we've, had, we've seen more instances of that this year. That's caused a bit, of, you know, a bit of hassle in itself, extra checking them, extra work bringing them back in, as well as these small calves. It's been quite a busy spring. So looking back to last year, obviously it was a dry year. It was hot through the summertime. Um, we put the bulls out on the 26th of June. Um, we only, they only go to the cows for seven weeks and they go to the, the heifers for six weeks. So it was a short period and it was, it was unusually hot at that time across the whole country. Um, but it was hot through the night as well, through the day. Um, the grass was short. We thought the cows were in good condition all summer, so it's not something we're worrying about too much. Um, but whether that's made a difference, we're not sure. We did get up, we did eventually get some rain in the end of July, and grass flushed up quite quickly. We got a cut, a second cut silage, 
Uh, we weren't really expecting to get anything from even just a few weeks before. So they looked again like the cows were getting a bit of feeding there. The grass didn't really last that much longer. And again, through into September, we ended up having to feed straw out September and the, and the whole of October out to cows just to supplement them. In general, we thought the condition of the cows all summer, I was, I was quite happy with for the season that we had, I was quite happy with it. So in the, in the summertime, they get a mineralized molasses nearly ad lib depending on the seed it's more for staggers as anything else but it has other minerals in it um, as the cows get later in the season again i start to feed them just a little bit of barley with a snacker it's only maybe half a kilo ahead if that and i put some minerals in with that so i know that they're definitely getting that um, as they're getting shorter you know as the grass is getting less in quantity and quality as the season goes on Right, so we did uh, a metabolic profile in the, I think it was the second week in March. It's the second year that we've done it. Just, I was just conscious that the silage was reasonably average. It wasn't, it wasn't rocket fuel, but it wasn't terrible. But we were just conscious that the cows would be getting enough protein and energy through into calving. So we did that and we found that what my suspicions were right enough. And we gave them a little bit of soya three weeks before calving and through their calving period, just half a kilo ahead, just to bring the protein level up. Yeah, so we're obviously looking for the answers as to why we're getting the trouble, but everything's fairly consistent over, you know, the last 10 years. The silage has been taken at a similar time, similar quality. The minerals regime's exactly the same. The feed regime's the same. Occasionally we feed straw out in the back end if we have to, but most of the time, most of the years, we're not doing that. Last year we did, you know, we fed a lot out. We probably years in the past we would just be as short as grass, uh, as short of grass as we were last year, but it wasn't as hot. So we're, we're you know, we're trying to think of all the things that that could come together to make it what it was. At the moment, the calves look, you know, like they're thriving as normal. The small calves, some of them have caught up, and and it's difficult to tell. Uh, you know that they were any worse than the rest of them were. Some of them are quite noticeable. Um, whether they'll, you know, really turn into decent cattle at the end of the day, you know, time will tell. I have my doubts as to whether they'll. they'll I'm expecting to be a lower weight, a lower um, weaning weight at the back end, and possibly later to finish through next summer. Um, in general, I would think that the, the average weight across all my calves will be slightly down on the year. So the majority of the work um, hands-on at the calving time is done by myself. Mum and Dad will check the cows at night and, and feed pens and things, but if there's a calf to be souked at, I'm nearly always doing it or something else in the field I have to fix it. So, yeah, it's been a long, a long spring. It's been a lot of work, a lot of extra work with these small calves, and it's really demoralising. You go in and a cow calved some silly wee thing that's that's not viable or... Um, or worse, um, or it's something you're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to spend two or three days to, to, to try and get it on its feet. It's, you know, it's quite demoralising. Um, there's been a few times I'm thinking, uh, if it continues on, we have the similar bothers another year, probably a lot less cows will be here getting kept until we can get to the bottom of what it is. Well, the initial thoughts were on feed. So we, we've tried to take silage a little bit earlier, a little bit leafier to try and get a better quality of silage and we put an additive on the silage, uh, a moulding inhibitor. I don't know if I'm convinced it's much, you know, our silage was pretty clean. It was, it was average quality, but um, we'll obviously make sure, as we always do, that there's plenty of water. There's not many days here that the wind doesn't blow to keep it cool, but there's not a lot of shade around here, so there wasn't a lot of options for for changing really very much. Ourselves and the other uh, two farmers in the in the area had a meeting last week just to see if we could put our heads together and try and find out what it is that we are doing that other people aren't doing or vice versa. Um, and we, you know, the, the college is investigating to try and put things together to get an answer if there is one. My name is uh, Alwyn Jones and I'm a Veterinary Investigation Officer for SRUC Veterinary Services at, and I'm based at St Boswell's in the Scottish Borders. So we were first um, made aware of this problem in March this year and 
there were three there have been three herds affected the main problem is that the there has been a number of or a large number of small calves been born and these are either um, these were born alive most in most cases um, but there were a reasonable number of calves as well either uh, born dead at full term or die in the first 24 hours af after birth they had also a reasonable number of, of abortions as well the main finding was that these calves were particularly small so they were underweight poorly developed muscle um, quite lean calves um, in terms of body weights it would tend to range from about 10 to 20 kilograms which is significantly below you know what you'd expect um, a normal full-term calf on these herds to be of about 40 kilograms thereabouts um, also it was the placenta in these affected cases where um, was notably quite pale sort of whitish in appearance and the cotyledons which are the circular kind of button-like structures that attach to the to the uh, uterus of the mother were also notably quite small as well as we do with any abortion and stillbirth at the SRUC veterinary services we would we screen these calves for a, a range of diseases um, including Neospora, BVD, IBR, you know, leptospirosis and the range of bacteria and fungi and um, we um, we didn't find any con convincing evidence that this was due to an infectious cause so at present we don't suspect that this is due to an infectious cause. So the next stage in, in the investigation is to want now that calving has finished is to try and collect and, and collate all the data from these three herds you know particularly um, and, and, and to kind of to be able to do further data analysis to, to see if we can establish any patterns. We're also going to meet with local practitioners to discuss this, these cases um, and to update them and to see if there have been any further cases in the area that we're maybe not aware of. We're also going to be keen to monitor what's going on on these individual herds over the coming year, particularly with regards to these small calves and how they're progressing. And we'd also be um, looking into the possibilities of doing further research or encouraging further research in the future, you know, into small calves, placental insufficiency um, in, in cattle, and also kind of the impact of heat stress on cattle, particularly in early pregnancy. We'd be very keen to hear of, of any of the farms that have had similar cases. You know, we'd encourage you to get in touch with us because it does make a difference, you know, to kind of the more, the more information, the more data we can collect on this, the more that we can better understand what's going on and, and we can better advise what, what to do about this in the future. Advising these herds on what to do this year is difficult because we're not clear as to exactly what's going on, you know, what's, what's causing this problem. I mean, our general advice is to try and, you know, to focus on on nutrition. So, so ensure that the nutrition is right. Take, you know, kind of use silage analysis results and take advice from nutritionists um, as to um, as to, uh, to ensure that the 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 correct protein and, and energy levels is met and that the adequate mineral supplementation is provided. You know, think about. Um, your silage pit, is there anything that could be done better, for example, you know, think about the materials that's used to seal the pit. Um, is there any possibility of a silage face is left open for too long, allowing sec you know, fermentation to take place? So using shear grabs, for example, might help with that. And then in terms of heat stress, um, this year has been pretty good, really. It's, you know, it's more of like an average year, but thinking maybe if possible on some farms, maybe using um, fields which which have better shade um, for during the bulling period making sure that your the water availability is good because that's a critical bit in in cattle kind of um, managing heat stress themselves so make sure there's the water is there but make sure there's enough of a flow rate as well to meet their needs you know so those are some of the things you know that may be worth thinking about you know but again as I said it's difficult advice because we, we're still unclear as to what's going on. I'm Lorna Shaw and I'm a ruminant nutritionist with ACC Consulting based out the Perth office but working within the beef and sheep team nationally. 
So I was brought into the small calf syndrome cases by the veterinary services team. Basically, they'd been called out to farm about all the cases and they were wanting a kind of second opinion nutritionally. So I was called into farm and went in to see one of the cases. So the initial suspicions were that um, pre-calving silage um, quality was maybe not where it was needing to be. Um, it had been a really dry year previously, so we already knew that there was a lot of dry forages about and one of the farms had kind of reported um, potential spoilage issues. So we wanted to go and have a look at that um, and have a look at kind of pit quality, pit management um, and also kind of nutritionally how the silage was looking. Also just kind of presentation of feed pre-calving was a big thing to look at also um, and condition of cattle there as well. The initial kind of outlook was to have a look at the pre-calving ration. Um, so we analysed the silage again and then compared that back to previous analysis that we already had to look at how the silage was sitting in the pit and how it sat through the, um, through the winter period. We also kind of had a look at the pre-calving rations just to check that nutritionally uh, pre-calving all the cattle's needs were met. Um, and I kind of up on looking at that, we were quite happy with how everything was sitting. Um, so we needed to look at other options after that. The other kind of theories we were like thinking after looking at the initial pre-calving ration and seeing that silage quality was good, um, pit management was good and we didn't have a lot of spoilage issues so not a lot of kind of vicious potential mycotoxins as Alwyn mentioned earlier. Um, it went back to the theory that it might have been something earlier on in pregnancy so potentially um, after bullying or at placental development and those are kind of early stages particularly with the really hot summer we have now investigating that a bit closer and um, obviously at the time quite hard to investigate that when we're six months down the line and we've got calves on the ground already but it's, it's definitely taken us back to think it might be earlier stages in pregnancy rather than later on um, traditionally if it was a kind of late stage pregnancy issue, um, it would be more the cow that'd be affected than the calf. So typically, if um, cows are under nutrition in the last trimester, they tend to put more into their calf and less into themselves. So they'll tend to lose body condition before the calf will lose weight. So you'll typically tend to find actually a larger calf rather than a smaller calf. So these cases weren't really in line with that. Um, and that's why it's really kind of brought us on to another route and another, another thought on the case. As Alwyn mentioned before, um, it's quite hard to tell exactly what to do to reduce the risk because we don't really know what the exact cause is as of yet. However, there's a lot of things to consider that might help reduce the risk. For example, if we're under a period of heat stress, naturally cattle will tend to eat less during the day as they're kind of struggling with that heat stress level and also remembering kind of temperature and humidity index. If humidity is really high when temperature is high, the heat we feel is a lot higher. So they tend to eat less, perspire less, um, and that can really even though there's a lot of what seems like feed in front of them, they're not getting the nutrients they need. At kind of bulling time, cattle are still lactating, they've still got a calf at foot, so they've got that calf to feed as well as kind of make up their own maintenance. You want to make sure a cow at bulling time is on a rising plane. She doesn't really want to be losing weight at that time as well, so you need to make sure there's plenty in front of her. If we are struggling to get enough in front of them, thinking about putting maybe additional forage out or a wee bite, even later on the day when the temperature gets cooler, um, making sure there's a lot of water and shade there, um, and also just making sure throughout production that the needs are met um, like as appropriately as possible. Analysing your silage, looking at your pit, and speaking to a nutritionist to make sure that needs are met as closely as possible. And, try and avoid any problems like this occurring. If you're interested in getting some tailored nutritional advice for your livestock enterprises, there's up to £2,000 of specialist advice funding available through the Farm Advisory Service. Please visit the website or contact the helpline for more information.